Hello and welcome to my presentation on Lilithain, a lifted sub-based approach to hierarchical planning. My name is Dominic Schreiber, and this is work that was previously published at the Journal of AI Research. Uh, we are dealing with a totally ordered hierarchical task network planning, um, which is a subform of uh, hierarchical planning. The objective is to achieve a given set of tasks. So here we have three tasks in a symbolic notation with parameters by recursively replacing each of the tasks with a specific set of subtasks. So here, um, for each task, we may have one or several uh, alternatives of how we can replace a task with subtasks. So we need to choose one. Uh, and we do this recursively until only a certain kind of tasks, namely so-called primitive tasks, remain. And, uh, and these primitive tasks, read from left to right, must then form a plan which is a sequence of executable actions uh, beginning from the given initial world state. So um, in a world state, a fact is a Boolean feature. So a world state is a collection of facts. Um, a task is merely a syntactical footprint of something we wish to achieve. Um, and a method is a recipe to achieve a certain compound, so non-primitive task as such, a method has preconditions uh, with respect to the current world state and a sequence of subtasks. An operator, uh, similarly, is a recipe to execute a primitive task. So it has preconditions and effects with respect to the world state. Uh, and methods and operators may feature um, variables in their, uh, in their signature. And if we ground them, so we um, replace all of the variables with certain constants, uh, then we obtain reductions from methods and actions from operators. Um, and these structures don't have any free variables anymore. Uh, TOHGN planning can be done with propositional satisfiability as follows. Beginning from the input description, we ground the problem and obtain a, a database of ground operations which we can apply. Then. Uh, we begin with just encoding a single layer of the problem, so just the, the operations resulting from the initial tasks. We receive a propositional formula, and then we launch a SAT solver on the formula. If the solver reports unsatisfiability, then we just encode another layer and add it to the formula. And this uh, cycle is repeated until the solver reports satisfiability. Then we can decode a plan from a satisfying assignment. Um, so this has already been done in 2018 with um, one formula and with one solver for each of the cycles. So a new solver is launched for each um, further iteration. Uh, and in 2019, it has been done um, using incremental SAT solving. So in incremental SAT solving, you only use a single uh, SAT solver instance um, for, e all, for all the iterations. So you add to a monotonically growing set of clauses and you just set a number of assumption literals for each of the iterations. Um, this helps the solving procedure because you don't need to re-encode the entire formula every time. And also the solver is able to uh, reuse conflicts it learned in a previous iteration. So in, in this procedure I just described, the problem must be uh, grounded first. And uh, this is problematic in some instances. Um, so this is a little example here. We have n trucks, which um, are here located at location L0. And in order to solve a planning problem on the far right here, um, we need to get one of the trucks, no matter which, to location Ln plus 1. If we ground this problem here, then what we will get is like a matrix of many different actions because we instantiate all the possible parameter combinations. So driving with truck one from L0 to L1, from L0 to L2, and so on for each of the trucks. So we can easily see here that this leads to a combinatorial blow up in input size. Our approach uh, functions as, as follows. Basically, the, the one large difference here is that we skip the stage of grounding Instead, beginning from the input, we just perform some light pre-processing and then instantiate and encode the operations from the very first layer. And um, if the resulting formula is unsatisfiable, we instantiate and encode the next layer and so on without um, requiring a full grounding of the problem. So let's go a bit more into detail here. 
At the very first layer, we just instantiate all of the operations which match our initial tasks, as you can see on the right here for the three tasks. Uh, then next for the subsequent layer, we instantiate all of the possible children of each operation from the previous layer. Uh, and we do this from left to right, sweeping over the previous layer, generating a new layer. And uh, if we stumble upon an operation which contains variables, then uh, in contrast to previous approaches, we do not fully ground this into many ground operations, but instead we keep this so-called lifted operation with variables in our structures. And if a layer is fully instantiated, then we will encode it and attempt to solve the uh, formula we have encoded so far. So while we sweep over a layer from left to right, we perform a kind of reachability analysis. There's a simple observation that um, there is an alternating chain of dependencies. So we begin with our initial world state, which is part of the problem description, S0. And then the operations at the very first position heavily depend on this initial state because the operations have preconditions, uh, which must be uh, satisfied. And then um, the set of operations, O0, uh, influences the next possible world states, S1, because they have effects either directly, if they are actions, or indirect effects induced by, by their transitive children. So um, we want to use this chain of dependency uh, by, um, by doing the following. If we instantiate an operation, then we over-approximate the fact changes it may induce, and then add these fact changes to our set of possible facts. And then at a subsequent position, we can just discard all the operations which have preconditions that are impossible with respect to the current set of possible states. Okay, so now let's head on to our encoding and propositional logic. So for a SAT encoding, uh, you need a number of Boolean variables, which each have a certain atomic uh, propositional meaning. And uh, let's begin with the variables which denote an operation at a certain position. So at a previous approach, tree rex uh, from 2019, uh, we have one variable for each of the ground operations at each position of each layer. So for example, we would have variables for each of these drive actions at each of the positions where they can, uh, where they may happen. In our approach on the right, we only instantiate one single operation instead where we keep the variables, uh, the, the parameters, symbolic as variables. We also need variables which denote that a fact holds at a certain position uh, of a certain layer. Uh, and we do this in both approaches. So it, it has been done in TreeRex and we do the same. And we also introduce a number of additional fact variables for each of these symbolic facts which arrive from the symbolic operation on the top. So um, then we need an additional kind of variable, namely substitution variables. These are added only once and not for each position of a layer. Uh, for example, we need uh, to denote uh, with which truck the variable alpha is replaced here. So replacing it with truck one or with truck two. And these are variables which denote um, what's the actual meaning of this operation in the end. For our logic encoding, of course, we also need to add uh, clauses which constrain the variables with each another. And here for the tree rex uh, encoding, we can see, for example, here uh, a precondition constraint that this action uh, driving truck one from L0 to L1 uh, requires that truck one is at L0 before. We add these constraints as well, just with a symbolic representation. And then uh, we need some additional kinds of clauses. For example, we need to constrain that exactly one substitution must be active for each of the variables we introduce. And here is another one uh, which says, if we replace alpha with truck one and we replace beta with location zero, then the fact at alpha beta must be equivalent to the fact at T1 L0. And we add clauses like this for each of, the, of these symbolic facts we added earlier. Okay, so I hope that um, you, you get an idea of how our encoding differs from previous encodings. Our approach also implements a kind of anytime plan improvement. Um, here we have an array uh, where um, an initial plan is 
illustrated found at some layer. Uh, so here we have six actual actions, A0 through A5, and we also have four epsilon actions. So these are no ops, which are introduced by construction uh, of the algorithm. So uh, we can minimize the plan length by maximizing the number of epsilon actions, which, uh, which occur at this final layer. So what we can do is uh, to successively forbid the current plan length. Um, this has already been done um, 2019, the prior approach, but we uh, improved the, the encoding uh, by exploiting incremental SAT. So let's say here that um, we have six actions and now uh, we, will cons we will add a, a plan length counter in propositional logic and then enforce that now there must be at most five actions in the plan. If the solver finds a satisfying assignment, then um, we get a shorter plan. In this case, it even uh, has only four actions, which is even better. So then we constrain that the plan may have at most three actions and this fails. So then we have the plan that is uh, the shortest possible plan at the current layer, which is not necessarily the globally optimal plan because we may find a shorter plan at a deeper layer. Uh, this is an anytime procedure, so it is cancelable at any time. And then it just outputs the best plan found so far. Okay, so now let's head on to some evaluations. Here we compare SAT-based TOHTN planners with each another. So on the left-hand side here, we have the runtime of Littletain versus the runtime of TreeRex previous approach. Um, so this is a log-log plot. Um, points along the diagonal mean that an instance has been solved equally fast by both approaches and points on the upper triangle uh, denote that Lilutain uh, was faster. Each gray diagonal denotes one order of magnitude. So here we can see, especially for low runtimes, Lilutain has uh, less of an overhead, but also for the higher runtimes, Lilutain is almost consistently better than TreeRex. In the central diagram, we see the clauses encoded by Lilutain versus the clauses encoded by TreeRex. And on the right-hand side, we see the same um, but compared to Panda Totsat, another TOHTN planner. Um, and here we can see that for many domains, actually, Lilotain finds smaller formula by one order of magnitude uh, or even more. There are some domains like child snack uh, where we can actually see a polynomial difference uh, in, the, in the encoding size. Um, there's also one domain, namely entertainment, where our approach does not work well relatively to the previous approaches. Uh, for this domain, we noticed that it is highly beneficial to ground it um, and you gain a lot of information on which operations can just be pruned, uh, which is operation Lilotain does not have immediate access to. But overall, these results are very positive. So we also analyze, analyze the share of runtimes uh, of each of the approaches. So um, we, to, we use... Uh, stages like parsing, pre-processing, um, instantiation, encoding, file O, uh, set solving, and miscellaneous stuff. And here we can see that um, Totsat and TreeRex really spend a lot of time just on pre-processing and encoding the problem. Whereas Lilutain spends most of its time just in set solving, which is the actual search for a plan. So we can see here that Lilutain shifts its effort towards, um, towards set solving. Okay, so now let's take a look at the um, at an evaluation based on the benchmarks from the International Planning Competition 2020. Uh, higher is better here, and hypertension has won the total order track of this planning competition. Here we can see hypertension basically finds a plan immediately or uh, not at all, approximately. Lidotain, um, the best configuration of Lidotain we can see here on the top, and we see there is a um, break of point where Lilotain begins to solve more instances than hypertension. There is also a two quality aware uh, configurations of Lilotain which perform plan improvement and a preliminary version which uh, participated in the IPC and scored second place. Regarding the plan length, we can see here that hypertension finds much longer plans on average, while Lilotain produces very high quality plans even uh, if no plan improvement is performed. So. Um, this is due to the 
iterative deepening nature of Lilotan and finding a plan um, as quickly as possible. In conclusion, we presented Lilotane with the logic for task networks, a SAT-based hierarchical planner with novel instantiation and encoding techniques. It leads to much more compact formula and to faster planning in most domains compared to previous SAT-based hierarchical planners. It also leads to high quality plans, even without plan improvement. And we hope that the novel encoding techniques we introduced may also apply to other fields of automated planning or more generally SAT-based problem solving. Thank you very much for your attention.